Peter Holness, the director of the documentary film Subjects of Desire. I think any woman's road is easier if she's beautiful. The way I look has helped me in my life. But even my beauty doesn't change that I'm black. The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected person in America is the black woman. What I love about this Black America pageant is it creates a space for us to continue to celebrate Black beauty unapologetically. I wanted to be a part of the Miss Black America pageant. I needed to feel as though I mattered and my voice mattered. Little white kids would always comment on your hair, oh, it's so big, you look like a lion, you know, <laughs> like you look like an animal. No one else says that to anybody else. In the realm of beauty, Black has to be minimized. People tell me, all right, when are you going to straighten your hair? Your hair, your hair, your hair. When you don't love yourself, you don't love anything. There are only three models for what a black woman can be. Somebody's caretaker or maid, this over-sexualized video girl, or they're the angry black woman. We're more than that. In a global world, we are moving towards a very different mixed ideal. What's considered ghetto is now popular. The history of race is such a painful one that then to just be like, I like the way this looks. It's so dismissive. I can make you this concept of beauty was being applied to me, but I never believed I needed to look that way. To be beautiful, to be great, to be excellent. This is what everybody comes to see anyway. Whoa. Let's keep embracing that beauty. Us. Because it's always been here and it ain't going away. Cause I am me. You are your I am black, I am beautiful. Hello and welcome. I am Patricia Baby Amawa. Today I have a very special guest. She's a Canadian television and film producer, writer, and director. Her new film, Subjects of Desire, is making international acclaim. In fact, the Hollywood Reporter has described her as the next big thing. Wow, that's amazing. My guest is Jennifer Holness. Hey, Jennifer, how are you doing? <laughs> hey, Patricia, thanks for having me here. Woo! <laughs> wow, I'm so glad we can finally sit together to have a chat. Um, however, you know, I know that there's COVID, so I must say that you're going to have to come back after COVID for us to do this in the studio. <laughs> Well, I absolutely, I'm, you know, I'll be very happy to sit down with a sister and have this conversation, you know, and I'll be very happy that COVID will be finished. <laughs> yes, amen, amen to that. And congratulations for all the amazing things that are happening. This is your first feature that you're directing. So I'm so, so proud of you. I watched it and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I'm, I'm, listen, it was nerve wracking in some ways to launch this film because look, I'm making a film about black women and beauty and this is my feature directing your debut. I mean, it could have gone so wrong. <laughs> And, um, but, um, the, you know, luckily it's been so well received and, um, and I really, um, and I love that women like yourself, girls, that they're getting it, that they're understanding what um, the film is trying to say. And here's the thing, in our community, I think in the black community, you know, we get it more naturally, um, but it's actually impacting, I think as well, outside of our community, which is really important. I like the, the fact that you delve into um, a lot of the stereotypes and topics that um, sort of pertain to black beauty, b the black woman, her sexuality, who she is, how she's perceived. Uh, now, one of the things that uh, i like us to talk about is the history of black beauty, uh, which you captured very well in the film, and, and how that, beauty, that history has affected you know, how people see us, even up till now. L let's talk a little bit about that. The reason I wanted to make the film was because I, I felt very strongly that we had this problem where people didn't see us, you know? And I also, then the other problem was how they saw us was really problematic. And then I started, to, so when I started to look at the film, I knew about these stereotypes, the Mammy, the Jezebel, and the Sapphire, but I didn't know, know them, you know? Um, and when I started to look at them, I started to realize these stereotypes were permeated 
how I was perceived or how my sisters were perceived or how my children were perceived. So the mammy, you know, it's like this fat old black woman whose whole job is to care for you and that's all she wants to do. And even her own children don't matter. Or this angry black woman, which is essentially any black woman with an opinion. You have an opinion, you're an angry black woman. <laughs> and then the third um, is the Jezebel. And this is, you know, the very sexualized black woman. And, you know, and, and that, um, you know, black women are so sexually voracious. That's all they want. All, you know, and so I started looking around and I thought, where did these come from? Where did this come from? You know, like, did it just pop out of the air? You know, and then I, you, you go back to the 70s and you see, wait a minute, those stereotypes were there strong. You go back to the 50s, you see, you know, and then you go back and you go back and you, and I started to realize that like many things, <laughs> uh, these stereotypes were originated out of colonialism and slavery. And there was a direction, a directive behind these stereotypes. And the unfortunate thing is they've been with us so long, we've, we've absorbed them and they've become even, you know, white folks, they act those stereotypes on us. And we ourselves, we actually have even embraced some of these stereotypes. So I wanted to do a film that exposed this and uh, showed you the origin to give you, to return back the power to us to say, we can reject this. And the backdrop for the film is a 50th Miss Black America pageant. I also do know that the pageant started as, you know, a protest against the exclusion of black women from the Miss America pageant. So why did you decide to use this as the backdrop of the film? I started doing research and I discovered the Miss Black America pageant in a more fulsome way. And then I discovered a few things. One, the Miss Black America pageant was created as a protest against you know, the reigning beauty norms to say black is beautiful. That's number one. Two, that on the night that the Miss Black America pageant happened, on the same day, the Miss America pageant happened across the street from each other. And here's the thing. While Miss Black America was a protest against you know, uh, the reigning beauty norms, Miss America, there was the largest feminist protest saying, women, we should not objectify women. Down with pageants, they're no good. So here white women protesting, no good pageants. And here black women are saying, oh my God, we get to have a pageant. So for me, that was the reason why I felt like I had to use the Miss Black America pageant because the legacy, what it meant, what it stood for. And, um, and then I was actually quite lucky to be totally honest that it wasn't just a Miss Black America pageant, that it was the 50th. So it was in fact a celebration of what had come before. So, um, uh, you know, when, when I discovered that, I, I reached out to the pageant people and Aletha Anderson, who um, is the, the, the um, daughter of the founder who helps to put it on, she was so kind and, um, uh, you know, with some negotiation and so forth and whatnot, I was able to go down there and film and I was very, very grateful. I felt it was like um, it was God talking to me and that it was the right time, the right, um, the right um, uh, event to be uh, a big part of the how the arc of the film worked. Right. Yeah, I, I thought that was great. Um, and there's something that one of the contestants said that really, you know, touched me. Um, she was um, talking about the fact that um, she got feedback um, when they published the pictures of some of the girls that were going to be in the pageant. And the feedback that she got was that she looked too ethnic. And she said, so I decided to change my looks um, to what they wanted so I could win. And she eventually won, um, you know, one of the pageants. And um, now let's talk about the concept of beauty and the prescription of beauty, I would say. That what, you know, like people have a suggestion of what beauty is. But uh, to you, having made this film, um, what have you to say about beauty? When I was growing up, I did not feel I was beautiful. You know, um, uh, I think that, you know, I had darker skin, you know, uh, you know, I had full lips, um, you know, uh, you know, flatter features is what one would say. And I grew up in Canada and there was like um, very little black people <laughs> but back in the day. No. Uh, um, and um, so it was in it was 
And I also didn't know any of my history because we were never taught black history in Canada. So you have to understand knowledge and power and what beauty is. Because I feel beauty is powerful and, and beauty gives you power. So I felt very powerless as a child. As I got into my late teens, into my uh, 20s, and I went to university, and I started to understand my history as a Black woman in the world, and, and the, I started to see myself as more beautiful. So, um, and then I met my partner, and I was, and I've been so married, married for so long, you know, this man tells me I'm beautiful, so I'm like, okay, but <laughs> here's the thing, Patricia, I know that... Um, the society didn't change so much. My perception of myself is what changed. And so that's what I started to understand is that, you know, it's like, it's beauty is about power and perception, right? So for me in making this film, right, I wanted to, to say, I actually wanted it to be a love letter. And it's to say that, okay, however they see us, how you see yourself, if you see your beauty, you will walk into the world and the world will have to embrace it. That is some of the things I'm trying to say. And even with my own, I have three daughters, Patricia, they helped inspire this film. But this is what I keep saying to them. You know, I look at them, I said, oh my God, you're so gorgeous. So much so, by the way, that all these things I talked about, darker skin, full lips, and you know, a booty, all of those things, not everybody wants them. <laughs> but at the end of the day, that's be right. <laughs> right? I mean, think about it, right? I mean, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so funny that even... Um, it's superficial, to, 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 but don't make no mistake. That perception is very, very powerful because it protects you. It gives you a place in society, um, you know? And so I have never, I have never, um, I've never um, believed that it's unimportant, but what I do believe is that you have to um, ignore all that noise and walk into your own beauty like feel it, believe it, see it, and it's yours. I agree. And there's something else that you delved into in the film, the whole idea of, you know, um, black features and things that are synonymous with black beauty now being commercialized or being, you know, the popular thing. For instance, our lips, our butts, I mean, people are trying to get lip fillers to look like us. They're trying to enhance their butts to, <laughs> to be structured like black women and all that. Um, yet, um, there's still um, a lot of um, uh, sort of discrimination against what we perceive as black beauty. Uh, why do you think society, even though they're embracing our features, have not come out to say, oh, this is a standard of beauty that we can, you know, come out and totally accept and, you know, be proud to present as part of what beauty should be? Well, it's, it's kind of like what Ryan um, says in the film, and she's the one who wins the film in the, in the, the pageant. She says, you know, white women have not known how to be they, have not, they don't know how not to be the center of attention. So this is, <laughs> so this is the thing, you know? So our features that we grew up with that were seen as ugly, that is now coveted, um, and that is actually in fact upheld to a greater extent when it's on white women, those features um, and attributes, I call them features and attributes, like for example, a physically fit body, we have to demand it. We have to say, look, we know we're beautiful, and you're taking these things that are a part of us, okay? So let, give us the credit for it, as you know, another one of the documentary says. Give us the, um, you know, you know, you know, and let us embrace us. You don't, you know, we don't need to actually become you, you know. Let you know you want what we have, so accept us. Put us in the center. Yeah. So, but at the end of the day, Patricia. I think that what I hope the film will do will spark conversation and will open up eyes so that we take this, that we, we don't accept any of these other ideas about who we are and what we are, that we get to present ourselves as we are and step into our beauty and know that it is, it is, that is, and also, and, and it's not just because it's frivolous, Patricia. When I, I keep saying that beauty is powerful, and has power, here's the thing. When you are centered, when you are seen, when you are heard, that is power. 
right? And that is what beauty gives to, to women. So we must demand that and we must show up like that. Show up with all of that. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I really like that. Uh, I like what you said there. And it's important for us to walk into our beauty, um, as you said, and, and just you know show up and be present and be proud of who we are. Now, you, you talked about colorism a little bit, um, you know, when you talked about yourself growing up. Um, and I know that that has continued to you know, be an issue. In our, even in our community, people with lighter skin are preferred and you know, are elevated above the ones with the dark skin. Um, now, where did this come from and where do you see this going? Uh, because I think it's still with us right now. Um, you have three daughters. How is that affecting them? And what do you think is the future regarding how we can begin to see ourselves um, based on other contents, um, other things that we bring to the table other than the color or the shade of our skin. So colorism is a really interesting thing. And I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding of it in some ways. One, lighter skin folks, without a doubt, within our communities, within the, within the black community, we actually, we are actually the ones that perpetuate that um, hierarchy, okay? So without a doubt. In slavery times, the sons and daughters of these slave masters were lighter skinned. We keep saying that, you know, they're just black people, but, and yes, they are that, but they were the children of the slave masters. And so what they would do is that they would give them the better jobs. They would give their children better jobs. They would sometimes, um, uh, when, they, when they've died, they would, leave, they would, they would uh, give freedom papers to their children they would sometimes, not always, um, they would sometimes educate their children. So what that meant was their children, who were lighter skinned because they were mixed with white, um, had the, the, the highest, higher economic um, situation in the Black community. They were still Black because back in that day, one drop of Black blood meant you were Black. But here they were, more educated, um, had the better jobs, <laughs> You know, I had a little bit more freedom. And so that created a hierarchy. Yeah. Okay. That, and that hierarchy and that hierarchy of being closer to whiteness. And in our community, we valued it because, you know, who doesn't look up to the guy with the better job, with the better education, with the be you see what I'm saying? So that's how it started. To, so within our community, it became super important. So that's why they used to have, you know, black folks would literally have churches where you could not go to that church unless your hair could pass through a comb test and these kinds of things, right? You see, we were in, so they were absorbing this awful, hateful stuff because, you know, to be honest, we're human beings. And with human beings, we, when, you, when an advantage is presented to you, you're going to utilize it. So that's some of the things that we have to think about colorism. But it's insidious and it's damaging because what it tells some women is that it tells them that they have no power. It tells them that no power to get the, the fellow they want, to get the job they want, to get the... Um, you know, the position, you know, uh, like even if they're in a job, but almost anything, it tells you that you are not going to be able to compete. And when in actual fact, what takes you to compete is your belief in yourself, your dedication, your hard work, and, you know, and the beauty you bring out into the world, you see? So these are some of the things that, you know, colorism, you know, negates. And unfortunately, our men have been a part of the problem, right? And, uh, you know, um, because let's face it, when black men started to gain power in the music industry, they perpetuated this, you know, light skin, um, you know, beauty over dark skin beauty, you know? So this is why I'm so grateful for people like Naomi Campbell, um, you know, one of the top models in the world for decades who happens to be a dark skin beauty, you know, Lupita, who happens to be a dark skin beauty, you know, Whitney Houston, who, you know, is a dark, you know, was a dark skin beauty. So I'm grateful for those people, but we really have a problem that we have to really look at and, and dispel. And we really must understand the fundamental truth of the fact that the children of these guys were being um, uplifted 
and that and we have taken that on hmm. wow I, I mean, it, it's interesting you mentioned the music videos because I've noticed that myself that, I mean, most of the music videos, um, the, the girl that is the center of attraction, that is the queen and the beautiful one is always either light skin or white. Um, and I think as content creators, um, we have to keep this in mind because we, we, we're sending a message each time we kind of say this is the one that is the beauty. Uh, and that's what people ki kind of, you know, carry in their minds and perpetuate. Now, let's talk about hair, because hair, I think that you cannot talk about a black woman without talking about hair. Uh, our hair is such a thing, um, and um, it, it's, it's not going away. <laughs> and you delve into that in this film in a very beautiful way, and I love how the subject was dealt with. Um, let's talk a little bit about black hair. Um, and, and how you actually, you know, were able to portray it in this film, in Subjects of uh, Desire. Well, the thing about black hair, so yes, you're absolutely right. Black women, like it is pre our preoccupation from the time where our mothers stopped twisting and even when they're still twisting. Um, you know, the thing is this, our hair is, is one of the most defining feature of blackness, right? In fact, you know, back in slavery times, did you know that the, the, it wasn't even complexion because after you intermix enough times, color might go away. But you know what always revealed? Hair. Okay. So I felt like after seeing a number of documentaries by black men and others, um, actually in, in some ways humiliate and make fun of black women for having weaves and perming their hair, I really wanted to look at this because there's a whole thing about respectability politics that I was aware of, whereby as a, as, a, as a black girl, I knew that I could not take some jobs without having straight hair. I knew that yeah, I couldn't go into certain places without straight hair. When I was, I was saying when I was 15, I put braids in my hair for the first time and I was so excited. Uh, and I went to my job and they told me I had to go home and take it out because my hair was rude. So you, you see what I'm saying? So hair can be traumatic. Hair can be, you know, um, and it has been for black women and it has been a source of humiliation. But this is the thing. I wanted to show the history of our hair, why we have our hair in all these different styles and so forth. But I also wanted to say, look at us. Just ignore all of that noise. Black women, if you want to have your weaves, put it on. If you want to have your braids, put it on. If you want to have your crochet braids, put it on. Don't let this these people shame you, okay? And also, with this natural, this natural look that's coming in, I'm so, so happy, so pleased to see this. You know, and and so I wanted to give black women in the in the conversation a confidence to do whatever they want to do with their hair, because we because they would understand the history of why we have done certain things. You know, someone told me, Patricia, that um, what was the beauty of the documentary was told to me is that they finally understood, the, you know, the source behind so much of the things that was put on them. They, they knew it was happening to them. They knew it was happening, but they didn't understand the source. And in the conversation with hair, I wanted to bring us back to the source of how and why we made some of the choices. And then also say, I'm glorifying you with whatever you do now. Wow. I was kind of like, what? When I saw Rachel on the screen and, um, and you know, Rachel is, you know, someone that um, actually exploited uh, being black to gain a very high position. She was head of the N NAACP in the state and, and did so many things um, as a white woman who was um, living as a black woman. <laughs> Her hair looked black and she, you know, was um, culturally black as she put it. Uh, now, when she came on the screen, I was like, what? And, and then when I listened to her, um, I liked that at the end of the day, what the message was, you know, um, yeah, you're, you're white. You have to be proud of that, too, even though you want to identify as, you know, black. And I think the same message is a message that we as uh, black people need to take home 
Um, she's white, trying to be black. Um, she likes being black. I, I, I don't understand how. I, and I know one of the, the women in the film said, you, you're trying to be black, but being black has put us in a situation where we're going through a lot of difficulties. So <laughs> I'd like to hear your opinion about Rachel and, and what you think about you know, her situation in, in just a position to we as black women, what we go through for being black, yet you're white. You're in a privileged situation, and you want to be us. <laughs> yeah. Like, Patricia, honestly, Rachel Dolezal is, was really a surprise to me, and I felt I really wanted to understand her. And it's mostly because of what you're saying. It's that she is white, which is a privileged position. And it was the first time I'd seen someone pass, as a woman, pass from white to black for a decade. <laughs> wow, right? Because because we know like all these stereotypes, all these things that's put on black women, it was so surprising to me. So I felt like I really had to talk to talk to her. And um, when I did, you know, I, I understood that she fundamentally loved blackness, right? And so there's, it's problematic. There's some, you know, as, as Dr. Thompson in the film says, you know, you cannot deny your lineage. And that is what she did. And, she, and that's what she shouldn't be doing. But at the same time, and, and there's, it's not but at the same time, it's and at the same time, the, the one thing I could say is, it's, it's that um, she saw a beauty in blackness that I, I wanted to show that because she saw beauty in blackness and I wanted to show that, yes, ladies, look, even, even Rachel knows how fantastic we are. <laughs> now, again, I was nervous about putting her in the film because I knew some women, black women would have a problem because you know the feeling is that she took advantage of uh, yeah. you know, opportunities that could have gone to black women and so forth. And also so much, you know, we work so hard um, we're often paid the least. We're often given the, the least opportunities. We're often um, structures, um, systems and structures exist that keep black women in single home situations, in, 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 you know, in, um, in difficult situations. Um, and and so, you, you, so you know that for a lot of black women, this is really an upsetting thing to think of this white lady having opportunities that could have gone to black women, you know? Um, and so, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, and that is true. But I do also think that you couldn't, in my mind, in, why I have her in the film, I could not have some, I could not talk about black women and beauty and how our beauty is, is not the standard, that white beauty is the standard and not look and talk to the white woman <laughs> who wants us to be us or, or to, you know, to embrace us. So I just felt it was really important. I thought it was a really important part of the conversation, um, yeah, to, to bring forward. How do you feel about um, the response to the film so far? Uh, how do you feel about how people are responding to the film? I mean, the Hollywood Reporter called you the next big thing. You know, I was excited to see that. But how are you feeling about, you know, how people are reacting to the film? I have to say it's been incredibly stressful. Uh, to see what the reactions may or may not be, I, I have to tell you. So obviously I'm doing this because are you nervous about how people are going to? Oh, absolutely. And when the when I when I saw the Hollywood Reporter Hollywood Reporter's article, I was like, I was stunned. I, I you know someone sent the the digital copy to me, and um, and I was like, oh gosh, it's the Oscar episode, you know, edition. I love the fashions. <laughs> I'm like, Viola's looking fierce. I mean, like what? And I was flipping through and just enjoying that. And then I turned the page and then there is my big head, like smiling in my gold dress. <laughs> and I was like, and then I saw the words wow. and it was just, I mean, I teared up. I was like, oh my God, you know, it was really a beautiful moment because you have to understand, you know, I don't, you, you work, you work, you, you, you try to make change, you, you know, and, and sometimes you feel like you're beating your head against a wall, like you're, you're not, you're not supported, you're not, um, 
you know, you're, you, there's no value to the thing you're doing, you know? I some, I do feel this way, you know, um, sometimes. And, and when I saw that, I was like, oh my God, someone, someone sees this wonderful thing in my work, you know, and in me. And, and so it's terrible in some ways that, you, you know, you get this validation, you know, yeah. but it was very validating. I, you know, I can't lie. It was very validating to me. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that was nice. And I think other than besides that, we've gotten some great reviews. Um, you know, I, I my struggle is to how do you get black folks to come out and support? <laughs> so this is the thing, because, you know, in the white community, there's a lot of woke white folks who are seeking to understand these things. But there's a lot of white folks who are like, Mm. I don't know. What are they trying to say? That was interesting because I get that reaction too, Patricia. You know, because what you have to understand, right? Especially from older white folk, they have been the center. And so, and, and what I try to do, even though the film looks at some of the things that have been, the narratives that have been put on us, some of the trauma, it also is very celebratory. It comes from, it actually shows Black women and Black folks in a light of, um, strength and and beauty. So you have to understand that this is not the typical way in which Black work is presented. You know, Black trauma is usually presented as only Black trauma. Mm. And you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 you know, the dominant culture, they eat that up. It's breakfast. It's like, oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. And, they, you know, <laughs> that film is so good. Because there's a weird thing that happens sometimes where black films told by white folks get so much more um, support, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to say that there is a lot of support from the community that's happening, um, but I'm trying to get the word out. But it also is not a film that mines black trauma in the way that, you know, the dominant culture prefers. So there is pushback too. But do you know what I mean? When I, do you know what yeah. I mean when I say yeah. that you know that the, the, you know how sometimes our work, if it's presented in a certain way, that it's like, and then white folks, are, okay, yes, you know, like this is it, yes, this is it, I get it. But when it's like when it's from a, when it has that uplifting thing, where you have someone says um, white women don't know how to not center themselves. I mean, when you have black women saying these kinds of things you're going to get some pushback. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and, and that's what a film like this will do, you know. It will, it will kind of um, hit some people the bad way. <laughs> it will, you know, but the truth has to be told, you know, which, um, I mean, we, we as storytellers, we have to be bold to tell um, because that's the only way we can bring about positive change in society. You have a very supportive partner, so it's Sutherland. You know, and um, you have both done amazing things together with Hungry Eyes. You produced, you know, big TV, you know, dramas. I mean, I love, you know, Shoot the Messenger and the, the, all the other things you've done. You know, great job. Um, what have you to say about the relationship between black men and black women? <laughs> okay, so I think my relationship is a great question, Patricia. My relationship with, with, with Suds is, is, a, is a special one. It's a, um, I would like to believe it's not unique because I would like to believe that so many of the black men out there are really there supporting their partners. I really hope so. I don't know if I always see that. People tell me all the time that how um, special our relationship is, you know, because he is a supportive person. But girlfriend, I am incredibly supportive of him. Make no mistake, okay? So. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I, I, I think that, um, you know, we came up together, we met in university and we respect each other. We, we, we give each other the opportunity to communicate. And when one of us is rising, we're there for them. Because, you know, everything is ebb and flow, right? Sometimes he'll be like going here and I'll be, you know, here, and I'm here to support him. And then now that I'm, you know, when I was making this film, he was like, I'm gonna help you. He helped, he became, he was an executive producer and he came on and ended up being a producer because of the work and he put in to help me make this film. And so that's terrific. And I hope that the, that message, um, people will see that. I, I mean, I talk about it. So I hope people see that message. And, and, I, and I know that 
even to be honest, let's go back to this as a dark skinned black woman. I think I feel um, like in some ways I'm walking in the world with a very successful, tall, handsome black man who is with uh, a woman that is, you know, dark skinned and fabulous. Um, and so we present, I think, uh, um, a model of a really lovely, supportive relationship. On the flip side, we have a problem in our community, in North American community, um, whereby our black men, um, you know, they have not supported in some cases in the way that they need to. It's, um, you know, I think there's something about, um, there's something about the culture that has presented black women as, you know, bitches and, and you know, and, um, and um, you know, what is it? Blah, 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 like, you know, sassy and all these kinds of things, um, whereby, you know, you know, a black man to marry a black woman, it's like a big deal. It should be every day. A black man to support a black woman, it should be every day. I shouldn't go online and see some of the hate black men are spewing on black women. These are wrong things, right? And so I hope the film in some ways um, gets black men thinking, what are they doing? How are they supporting their queen? You know, it's a king and a queen together, right? How is that happening? And I hope that that's a part of the, the, the legacy of this film as well. Mm. I want to ask you, I mean, how it is like working with your husband? Because my husband and I work together. And I know sometimes can, that can be a very difficult uh, dynamic, uh, especially in the creative field where you want this white and they want that black. Or you like your, you have this creative preference and they have that, you know. It's all of what you just said. Uh <laughs> You know, here's the thing. You're right. You're absolutely right. It's 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 not always the easiest thing, but you know, like what I was saying, um, we have this thing: the best idea wins, is one of the things that we have. And so, it's not your idea or my idea. The best idea. How do you know the best idea? You communicate about it. You you defend your idea. You you know. And so, if you can do that, then the best idea wins. The other thing is, you know, we're, you were talking about. Um, uh, you know, us posting about going away. He took me to um, the Royal York for a weekend. I call it a little dirty weekend, <laughs> a fun weekend. And um, you have to do those things, um, Patricia, because I think that you get so sometimes trapped up into my position or your position. And, um, and sometimes, but, you know, sometimes you get so busy, you get very short. It's like, ugh. You know, like uh, this, you know, and all these kinds of things. And um, and I have to fight it. I have to fight it. You know, I have to fight it. And um, and I think sometimes I <laughs> I do my um, I would do my Oprah, um, you know, um, uh, like uh, or spiritual minutes and things like this. I I try to actually take time and get back inside of myself. So and have quiet moments, um, just so I can remember who I am. And when the craziness of life and the craziness of the day and the craziness of all the demands that are at you, that it, when, I, when, I, when I do take that time, my response is a little bit more measured. My response is a little bit sweeter because sometimes that's what it is, you know. It's not that you're having a, 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 dis, a disagreement. It's just how you sometimes respond. It's sometimes how you communicate back. And, and that can be the actual thing thing that is causing the real friction so mm -hmm. i'm cognizant of that and i try to i try to um to be more measured yeah. mm. Does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, you're making you're making sense. <laughs> I'm taking some advice for myself. <laughs> oh, but this has been an amazing conversation, and I want to congratulate you again for a job well done. I absolutely love the film. I recommend it. I want everyone. I wish everyone can see it. You know, both black, white. Every, every woman, actually, because it will help you to learn things, even about yourself that you didn't know about, you know, beauty and what other people are going through. So um, thank you again, Jennifer, and I wish you continued success. I, I know you have some other great works coming, and we'll be following up to see what's, um, you know, Hungry Eyes and 
you and Suds have, you know, to offer. And I, I'm sure it's going to be all great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Patricia. Thank you for giving me this platform to speak about the film and for your support. It is so, so, um, it's such a blessing. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And I wish you all the best. Um, and, um, you know, it's at Hot Dogs, everyone. So make sure you find time to go watch the film. You will not regret spending that one, I think it's uh, 103 minutes. <laughs> 103 minutes and it's 13 dollars. So it's, until May 9th, you can see the film. Go and watch it. Vote for myself if you love the film. Uh, I'd like to win a prize. <laughs> okay, yeah. my dear. Okay, take care, right? All right, take yeah, care. God bless. Yeah, have a good one. Okay. Afro Global Television is a global super channel that transforms the destiny of people of African descent through programming that informs, empowers, entertains, and uplifts. The mission of Afro Global is to showcase the best of Africa and the diaspora. Watch Afro Global Television on Rogers Cable, Bell 5, Telus, and Eastlink.